All right, it's Marquetta Breslin, and I'm super excited to be back tonight with another Marquetta Breslin Live. On tonight's episode, I'm going to be talking about plucking and ventilating, which one is best. I'll be right back right after this. To help you start making deposits We building a team full of winners From novice beginners to moguls with profits And moguls that's profits Steady for greatness we strive We dropping them gems over here Tune in to my credit we live Every time that song comes on, I'm over here dancing. Oh, way, oh, way, You know what he's actually saying is Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. He's saying Yahweh. See? It's not just Yahweh. I'm being silly tonight. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mark Wedding Present Live. I want to say hello to a couple people over in the comment section. If you're just tuning in tonight, we're going to be talking about ventilating and plucking, which one is best. And tonight I'm going to explain to you why plucking was created, how the whole idea came to fruition, why it was created, and then the differences between, the, the differences between plucking and ventilating. All right. So we're going to get right into it right after I say hello to a couple people over in the comments. All right. Rhonda, Rhonda, you were here first. I guess I'm going to do the comments. Rhonda Thornton, thank you so much. Uh, check your text. I already texted you back. By the way, speaking of text, here we go. If you're not in my text community, there's the number. Make sure to join. I do answer those text messages. Not the customer service stuff, though. I always get my team on that. I'm not there for the customer service stuff, but I am there to chat. In fact, um, for the past two days, I've had people with some, um, some things that they needed prayer for that they didn't even expect me to do, but I recorded a video for them, giving them words of encouragement. I do stuff like that on the text because that's just that's just how I am. Uh, Sybil, how are you? Uh, she said, hey, Rhonda, they were here front and center like 15 minutes or more before we started. So, hey, 504 Darling, how are you? Kina Mercer, how are you? Good evening. Uh, Brenda Jameson, see, I said your name right again. <laughs> how are you? Sunshine Story Ballantine, how are you? L Herring, good to see you. Vicky German, I love seeing your face. I love seeing everybody's face. Vicky, I hope you're doing well after, um, after you just got the incredible news that your life is going to change. Lauren H., hello. Veronica, Marcel, good evening. How are you? AJ, how are you? Um, yes, how are you? Hello. <laughs> Uh, charge it to my head, not my heart. If I don't know how to pronounce your name, I'm just going to say hello. Patricia Bryant, how are you? Boy mom, hello. How are you? All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Stephanie Simpson, Elstina Goodwin, uh, Khan. Yep, let's go. I'm super excited. Danette, Felisa, oh, Felicia, uh, Nina, Christian, Hello, hello, everyone. I'm sure I'm missing some people, but charge it to my head, not, not my heart. All right, I love you all, and thank you for tuning in. Listen, before we get deep into the instruction of this video, be sure to like 
and share. Share with anyone who loves wigs or anyone who you know can benefit from this information. And let me know in the chat, drop in the chat where you're watching from tonight. I want to know. And before I get into the training, I have one question. I usually always ask uh, at least one question. If you don't know already, uh, Mark, this is probably about the third, I think the third, second or third week um, that I've brought back Marquetta Breslin live. And I'm really, really, really excited. But I'm also refining the show and adding different topics and things like that. So I'm very interested tonight in time. What do you think about this time on the West Coast out here in Vegas and California and all that? It's 7 p.m. But for you East Coasters, it's 10 p.m. So what do you think about the time? Do you like this time? Would you like this show earlier? I'm not going to do later. But <laughs> would you like it around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 4 o'clock? I'm curious to know what that sweet spot is for you. So drop that over in the chat and let me know. And then um, once I get into teaching and come back over here into the chat, I will uh, read your answer. See, love this time. See, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Love this time. Me too. But six would be great. Queen A's Lock said it's nine o'clock here. I'm good with the time. L Herring said, I like 5 p.m. Ah, uh, oh, Liz. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate that. Everyone hit that like button. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I'm interested. I'm interested in what uh, what you all think. Okay, let's get into the training for tonight. So where do I begin? <laughs> so as I stated on, I think it was, oh, I don't remember when it was. I think it was actually on, the, on God Works on Monday um, when I did the How to Pray for Your Business show. I talked about um, my experience and I'll share a little bit about that with you here. So when I was in the Air Force, I had to, I got chosen to, or voluntold rather, to go and I had to transcribe these um, audios from an, a flight that happened with a hard landing. And so I could type really well, over a hundred words a minute, and they selected me to go and do this. And so it was me and two other airmen. And somehow, even though I think at least one of them outranked me, I got put in charge. And when I got put in charge, I put us on shifts. So we weren't all working at the same time. It just made more sense. And so during one of those shifts, I had time to surf the Internet because it wasn't my time to transcribe. And so in surfing the Internet is when I discovered really went really, really deep. This was years ago. This was probably around 2005, 2004, 2005, 2003, something like that. So as I'm serving the internet, I come across these wigs, but you can tell their wigs, but you can't really tell their wigs because it's coming out of the scalp, but it looks so thick. And these wigs were called lace wigs. They had absolutely no hairline except for going here, it was round. It started here and went in a straight line and it came all the way over here. And it was just like that. Like, I mean, it was, I couldn't even like, what, what was that, right? And it wasn't the type that they wear in television and film. It was something completely different that I had never seen before. So fast forward several years, let's say seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ahead of that, I started seeing, this was now after YouTube had came to um, fruition. I started seeing these ladies take these tweezers and tweeze hair from the hairline of different types of lace wigs. Well, as a person who makes wigs from scratch, it would make me cringe every time I saw somebody pick up tweezers and tweeze out all of that hard work. But knowing where they started, meaning knowing how thick some of these hairlines were. I have a 360 right here that has, I mean, this came straight from the factory just like this, and you can kind of see how 
thick this thing is. I mean, it's super duper thick. They tried to put some baby hair here, but I mean, it's thick. I have a different camera angle um, that I want to show you as well uh, in just a second, as soon as we get that together. All right, I'm going to show you what this looks like. And so these hairlines were so thick that people had to come up with a way to thin the hairline out to make it look more realistic. And you see right here how thick this is. It goes directly from baby hair to thick. And there's no variation. This one actually isn't terrible, but it's not ideal, right? So in order for people to thin a hairline out, what they started doing is taking tweezers and tweezing the hairline. And so they would take the tweezers, wet the hair, and just go in and tweeze some of the hairs out of the hairline. Now, I will tell you, I have seen some beautiful tweezed hairlines. I'm talking like, wow, that looks amazing. Hair just laid, right? However, the reason why people also tweeze and started with the baby hair is to hide that lace and to hide those grid lines and sometimes to hide the flaws created with those tweezers. And so when that happened or when hair gets over tweezed out of particular sections, then this happens. So this is a wig that um, has had the hairline tweezed to my goodness, right? It was tweezed for a very, a, a whole lot, trying to thin that section out, trying to make it look realistic. And look, the lace actually comes, the hair was supposed to come all the way up to here because the lace is all the way up to here. But you can look and see you can kind of see the damage that has been done not only to the lace, but to the actual wig from plucking. There's all kinds of holes in the lace and it's just honestly, it's just not usable. So before my daughter wears this wig again, we're going to have to do some repairs and fix this whole situation right here because it, it does, it just doesn't look right. Right. It looks damaged. OK, and so that is that is what plucking is and how plucking came to be. Um, I am not at all against plucking because, listen, sometimes when you're in a pinch and you may be in a situation where your client doesn't have a whole lot of money, but maybe they're having an emergency situation where all of their hair has fallen out. Let's say uh, they got a chemical cut. Right. What's a chemical cut, Marquetta? Well, a chemical cut is when basically when somebody tries to do their own hair at home and they try to either color their, we've seen the videos on YouTube and TikTok and they want to bleach their hair and then they go to look in the mirror and then they're like, oh my gosh, and their hair has melted off. That's a chemical cut. And look, it happens in salons too. It's not just on people doing it at home on themselves, right? So let's say they have an emergency situation, all of their hair falls out and they need a wig ASAP and you don't have time to ventilate a hairline. In situations and cases like that, I 100% say, listen, get those tweezers, plug that thing, do what you got to do. But you just have to be very, very, very careful because it is very easy, even with this Asian lace, I wish you all could feel this lace. It feels like, I mean, I can't even explain it. It doesn't feel like something that would go on your head. It feels like if I were to put this, um, to put this lace on, let's say I just put, this was a wig. This is a 360 and I made it into a wig and I popped it on my head and real fast and then I just took it off it feels like this lace would pop all of my little hair off around my edges that's how strong and stiff this lace is right so even with lace like this you can still pluck holes in this lace so you have to be extremely extremely careful now another technique 
that you can use, write this down because I haven't taught this anywhere. All right, this is the first time I'm even talking about this. Something else that you can do, all right, is you can get some Nair, N-A-I-R, the stuff that you use to remove hair from your legs. Get a stiff bristle brush. Apply the Nair, wear gloves, all right, make sure you're wearing gloves. Apply the Nair to the brush. And I don't have a brush with me right now, that type of brush, because I hadn't even planned on talking about this. But you know how you can flick the bristles and it spreads product? You can use the flicking technique very close, very close to this area. You can, but test it first. You can use that flicking technique just in certain areas, just like this to disperse that nair in some of those areas to help for speed up that process. And then you can go through. Yep, exactly. Like a scoring pad. <laughs> yes. But you can use that technique and um, just put a little bit on there, let it soak in just to help loosen up those knots so that when you do go in there and pluck, it's not like these big gaping holes in the lace. It's going to soften that hair up just a little bit. Like I said, if you're going to do that, you need to practice because that, um, that nair spreads very, very quickly and it spreads very, very wide. When you apply nair to a hair piece or to a lace piece to remove hair, it spreads like a relaxer. So you just need to be very, very mindful of how you approach that whole situation when you're getting ready to um, when you get ready to remove hair. All right. But that's plucking. Uh, like I said, I am not at all against plucking, but do it with caution. All right. Would I ever pluck a hair piece that I made? No, absolutely not. Because number one, that's a lot of time, energy and effort. But number two is just not necessary because when you make a piece, when you ventilate a piece, you're already placing the hair where it is supposed to go. All right. So that's the difference. When you pluck, you're removing hair from areas that you don't want the hair to be. And when you are ventilating, you're strategically placing the hair exactly where you want it to be. So that's why I always say if you work with wigs at all and you want to work with wigs and people on a professional level, you should absolutely learn how to do this because you never know when you're going to use or need that technique. All right. So let's see. Here I have Ooh, here I have the piece, one of the pieces from Inside Lace Wig University from my daughter, right? You can see here just not even looking at, not even having to look at the hairline, but you can just see right here in this little parted area how the hair is already laying beautifully, right? I don't need to go in here and plug this because when this was ventilated, the hair was already laid the way we wanted it to be laid. And there's nothing she needs to do with this but wear it, all right? Because it's already, the hair is already placed exactly where we want it at. So that's the difference between plucking and ventilating. When you're plucking, you're removing hair from areas where it's too thick. And when, look at this, we don't even have this pinned down all the way. But if I were to part this, with my fingers, you can see here just from where, where it was ventilated, how natural and realistic it looks. Now, even with this piece for Naya, with us using a whole like whole, lace with bigger holes in it, it still looks very natural when she wears this piece. And you can't tell that it's not her hair. All right. So the difference is when you are just like I said, when you're plucking, always remember that you pluck when you need to remove hair from something that has already been made, something that you did not make. That is when you pluck. You ventilate when you need to fix something 
or when you're uh, making a piece from scratch where you can strategically place your hair exactly where you want it to be. And what I would say when it comes to ventilating is I will always say to study hairlines, study the growth pattern of hairlines, the frontal, which nobody has seen the frontal yet from Lacewood University, it will make its debut in the sewing machine mastery course that launches. Nobody has seen that yet, but the frontal that we made for Lacewood University all around that hairline has short, super curly, vellus hair ventilated around that hairline. Why? Because that's how my daughter's hair grows. Her hair, she has short vellus hair all the way around her hairline. And so if you look at the growth pattern of her hair and how it grows, I can go in and strategically place that hair exactly where I want it to go without having to go back and pluck it. The reason why, one of the reasons why I decided to do this video is because <laughs> I think it happened like maybe 10 times during the launch of Lacewig University. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I need water. <laughs> Mm. Sometimes you just got to have mm, some water. Woo! <laughs> I was struggling. I thought I was going to just run out of, oh my gosh, yes. And then the chap lips on top of that. Man, y'all just don't understand how dry and dry it is here in Vegas, thank you. <laughs> I feel like a brand new woman. Woo! I was so parched. I was so parched. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Yes. Yes, I was. Okay. So don't y'all laugh at me. <laughs> so listen, studying the growth pattern of hairlines is very important because you want to mimic the hairline. You don't want to have to go in and pluck, but sometimes you just may have to depending on the circumstance. All right. Um, so just always remember that you pick up those tweezers when you have too much hair. And listen, let me say this. Sometimes when you're tweezing hair and you wet the hair that you're going, and I'm going to be um, honest with you. Well, I'm always honest with you. I don't tweeze a lot. It is very rare that I have to pick up some tweezers. I think the only time that I tweezed a hair, one of the only times that I tweezed a hairline was, was during the pandemic. I did one of those videos with um, some other amazing wig makers and hairstylists. And I just didn't have time to prep my wig the way I wanted to. So I had to pluck that hairline just a little, not the hairline, but the parted area just a little bit. And listen, I did what I had to do and it came out and it ended up looking nice. And I wore that wig for a, a, a while. I still have that wig. All right. So I'm not against it, but you have to understand how to do it properly. Don't poke holes in the lace. All right. Ventilating, I'm always going to say is in terms of which one is best. I don't believe there's one that's better than the other per se, because they're not used in the same instances. All right. Your plucking is always going to be used, in my opinion, in a different instance, as in making a wig from scratch and ventilating a hairline. Because if you have time, you're not going to pluck a hairline. You're going to narrow that hair out from that area and you're just going to go in there and ventilate it. All right. So it's, it's, it's a time issue. I'm always going to gravitate towards creating enough time to be able to ventilate because it just looks more natural. It, for me personally, I would prefer to not have to pluck anything. That would mean that I'm not buying anything from the manufacturer and, and wearing it right off the rack, so to speak, right? There's nothing wrong with that. This is just my personal preference, all right? If I do have to buy a manufactured piece, best believe I'm going to narrow that hair out and that part and that hairline, and I'm going to do my own thing. You can even, for some vendors, work with certain vendors and have them send you pieces 
without a part and without a hairline. All right. Did you catch that? If you didn't write it down, because if you have a great relationship with a vendor, you can communicate with them and ask them to send you your wigs without the part and without the hairline. That way, when you get it, you don't have to worry about the narrow. You can just get these pieces in and you can customize and you can keep it moving. All right. That's another tip that a lot of people don't know. These manufacturers, they want your business. They want to work with you. So if you just let them know what, what you need and you already have a relationship with them, chances are they're going to be able to give you what you need so that when you get them in, you can just customize them and then just boom, 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 boom. Now, another thing that I want to mention about plucking and with some of these knots, I, to this day, still have not been able to figure out the type of knots that they use. Even when, um, when I was over in India visiting the different factories, I learned that a lot of their training, some of them, um, I, which I didn't know this until I got there, but some of them have what some of my trainings all right they have some of my trainings and they learn how to make wigs and ventilate and you can definitely tell a distinct difference in those that had different training than others i'll just say it like that because some factories tie these knots and i know you all have seen them where it looks like a split knot but it's super dark at the root the only thing that I can think of that that is, is like some kind of double split knot, but it looks like it's been tripled and it makes the knot super thick. And sometimes even with nair, it's hard to pluck that knot out. The nair will soften it, but sometimes it just won't remove it and you'll have to go back in there and apply it again. All right. So just be mindful of that. I still to this day have yet to figure out the type of knot that is, um, but you know when I do, I'm definitely gonna let you know. But just be mindful of that. So sometimes when you're working with nair or even when you're plucking, it's hard to get certain areas. Uh, but if you do use the nair and it doesn't come out, you can just reapply and it should come right out, okay? I'm gonna jump over after I take another sip of this water because I'm parched. I'm gonna jump over to the comments and uh, read some of your questions. Mm. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have a middle when I'm teaching. It's either I'm not teaching or I'm at a twelve. I can't like do in the middle. I'm just go. I just go 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 go. And sometimes I'm like, something's off, something's off. I feel like my lips are sticking together. My mouth is sticking together. What is it? I'm thirsty. I'm parched. All right. Let me go over here to these comments. Whoo. All right. Jamisha May Jarmisha Mayfield says, where can we get that green wig block so that tape isn't needed? Uh, at Lier Bossi. At Lier Bossi is where you can get these. And they are the light foam wig blocks. Light foam wig blocks. Um, Felicia, oh, thank you. My nail tech, shout out to my nail tech, Stephanie. She just opened up uh, a nail salon here in Las Vegas called The Nail Collective. She has been doing my nails for like four years now. And they look amazing. They're Christmassy, but you can't really tell. And I had two bows over here, but those bows were getting caught in my hair, and you know, oh, boom, and y'all, I need a fill, okay, so I have two snowflakes on each of these, and I have bows, 3D bows on these nails, but she's gonna get me, I had to take them off because, um, hold on, go back, I gotta show the rest, um, uh, because they were getting caught in my hair, and then you can't really see them, but I have two sweater, four, four sweater nails, so I have two right here, almost, boom, and then I have two right here, sweater nails. I love nails. I am always doing crazy stuff with my nails. Um, Sunday, I go back, so who knows? I might have a whole Christmas tree when I come back next time. <laughs> Ivy's League. Hey, Ivy's League. I haven't seen you on here in a while. Thank you for tuning in tonight. 
Love, 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 and appreciate you, Marquetta. Oh, thank you. I love, 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 and appreciate you too. Completed the Lacewick University Monday. I wish I could give you a big hug. Yes. So we get ready to go into phase two. So on Saturday at 5 p.m., we have a private live. I'm going to go deeper with some training, and then I'm going to set you up for the mentorship program. So don't miss out. Make sure you're registered for that. Brittany Lilly, I've been stuck trying to do the single knot for weeks. Brittany, take a deep breath. Step away for a while if you have it, and then come back to it. What I would suggest is to go back. If you're, I don't know if you're inside Lace Week University or not. If you are, go back to um, the ventilating portion, slow it down, and watch it over and over. Or you can also watch last night's live. Um, last night's live, I have a video, not last night's live, the night before that, there's a video inside there that talks about ventilating too. But if I were you and you're in Lace Week University, Go back to that ventilating portion and watch it over and over and over again. We got some crazy close-ups. I mean, the camera angles were insane for Lacewood University. We were very adamant about making sure uh, we had great camera angles, okay? Um, yes, it's coming to you, Brittany Lilly. It took me a while, too. Yes, yes, yes. You are so right. Um, okay, let's see. What else do we have? It cuts into your skin. I'm not sure what y'all were talking about on that one. Oh, the lace. Yes. <laughs> yes. That lace can cut into your skin. Uh, uh, I threw my Denman brush away. Listen, those Denman brushes are everything. Everything. Um, all right. Beauty says... I'm so happy I signed up for Lace Week University. My kit will be here tomorrow. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Awesome tip to thin out the wig. Thank you. You are so welcome. Um, I've used Nair to make a widow's peak only. Oh, really? You're going to have a lot of fun with the Nair then because there's a lot of different things that you can do with Nair. You just have to be really careful. And if you're going to play around and pl practice, make sure it's not with a, an expensive piece that you have. Order You can even order some cheap pieces from, um, I don't know, some of these vendors that love to comment <laughs> under videos. <I> was <laughs> you can post something, a selfie, and they'll be like, yes, yeah, sis. Or say something, and you're just like, can you please stop commenting? Or, or they'll put their whole information under your video. It's just, or, or a post. It's just crazy. But if you do reach out to them, they will get back with you and give you a price list. And a lot of times their prices are really, really good. Uh, let's see. When using a brush... Close to the lace, does it pull the single knots out? No. However, if you're not careful, it can. So let's say with a piece like this, I always hold the, the, the piece at the top. I mean, I know this piece is, I'm just going to say it's raggedy. We're going to have to fix this. So I don't care if I hit this lace. But... If this were a delicate piece, I would just place those bristles. You can't see this. Let me turn this around so that you can see. I would place the bristles right at the root and then pull in a downward direction like that very carefully. But when you detangle anything, you always detangle from the ends and work your way to the root. All right. And when you do that, by the time you get up here to the root, you're not going to have to touch that lace anyway. Um, OK, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, yes. Listen, I went to go see my ENT doctor today and I can already I don't know what it is. When I get up here and I talk, something happens in my sinuses and I have to blow my nose. Usually. Around this time, yeah, I need to. Around this time, 
Oh, I have tissue right here. Around uh, 30 minutes in, halfway in, I usually have to really blow my nose. So I'm going to mute myself in a second and blow my nose in just a second. Yes, all the way together. <laughs> um, awesome. Awesome. I prefer to not have to use anything at all. I like glueless if I'm going to wear anything. But the reason why I haven't been wearing any wigs lately. Oh, thank you for that uh, close up there. Thank you. <laughs> the reason why I haven't been wearing any wigs lately is because um, I've been having a lot of headaches and sinus issues. And my wigs, because I make them glueless, are very, very snug. They're not tight, but they're super snug. It just causes headaches. So I'm just chilling on that for, for a while. Because um, if you can't tell, look at my cheeks. My face has been swollen probably for about a month now. And it's just sinus pressure. So I'm working with my ENT to figure out what is going on. Because I do have a puffy face right now. But it's okay. It is. It's okay. <laughs> my cheeks. Um, okay. <laughs> what she said and plucking and ventilating, that went fast. It really did go fast. Uh, make sure, though, to go back and watch this from the beginning. Um, Marnie, I do not have a list of vendors um, anymore. I don't have any vendors or anything like that. Um, okay, let's see. Yes, no hairline or parts. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. What does it look like without a hairline? That went over my head. What do you mean, Jer uh, Jarmisha? Cl uh, clarify that for me. I'm not exactly sure what you mean. <laughs> Good tip sponsorship. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've been working on the single knot for, listen, Brittany, here's what I want you to do. Um, that's a text number scrolling down below. I want you to text me, um, if you can, a video of you doing the single knot so I can see what issue you're having so I can help you correct it. If I can see it, chances are I can tell you what, how to fix or how to get there to fix that single knot. Uh, <laughs> You're so welcome. Um, all right. For focus in the course, what would I say are the three most important knots? The only knot, I'm telling you, the only knot to master first is going to be the single knot because every knot derives from the single knot. You have to know how to tie the single knot first before you learn how to do any other knot. Um, but the single knot and the double knot are the two that you would use the most. Um, the cross knotting, point knotting, and under knotting and all of that stuff, that is all single knots, but it's just the placement of that single knot that makes the difference. Okay, split knot is different, but you still have to learn how to do the single knot to do the split knot and the double split knot. So you want to make sure that you perfect the single knot before moving on to any other knot. All right. Okay. Um, let's see here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, you are going to get it. You are. All right. No YouTube backhand focus needed with your camera and your nails. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sunshine store. Okay, I'm going to have to mute myself and blow my nose, y'all. All right, I got to mute myself and I'm going to uh, turn my camera off real quick. Oh, well, we'll just do that. Okay, give me one.
Whew, thank you guys for that. Sorry about that. I just couldn't take it no more. Okay. <laughs> okay. I purchased a wig on clearance from a company. It was beautiful, but their hair keeps coming out directly from the root. Do you know what could be causing the knots to loosen? I have no idea, but what you could do to help seal those knots into place is you can use heat. Um, so you can take like the, the, um, like a barrel curling iron, put it on like a medium high heat and just kind of iron it around along the bottom. And then you can take some got to be glued spray and just spray it lightly, let it dry and then spray it again. That'll help seal those knots to, uh, so that it doesn't shed so much, but without seeing it, the one thing that I would guess is that it's just single knots that they didn't seal in place or lock into place. But I don't like without seeing it, I won't, I don't know. But I'm guessing that's probably the issue that you're having. Uh, let's see. Do you think it's an error in ventilating? Could it be the lace or ventilating? Yep, that's yep, it could be. I don't think it, I don't think it would be the lace, but again, without seeing it, my best guess would be the type of uh, them not sealing the knots. Okay, uh, I want to ventilate again, but is it a waste of time? No, because you can ventilate and tighten those knots down. Um, I don't think it would be a waste of time. What you could do is just remove a small section, go back in and ventilate the hair on your own, and then look at the difference and see um, how your knots perform versus how their knots perform. So I don't think it would be, um, I don't think it would be a bad thing at all. Um, <laughs> I need Ezra hair. My hair I'm using is cut from a track and so many split short hairs. I'm wasting so much hair. Elstina, I think you own Lacewood University. If you own Lacewood University in the I want to say it's module three and the module where I talk about hair, I show you how to draw your hair for lengths. So you don't have that issue with those short hairs. So you can take your single drawn hair and you can divide up your lengths by drawing the hair off and then you section off each length. All right. But that's what, that's the, that's what you're, that's what's happening. You're working with single drawn hair, which most hair that we work with is single drawn hair, but you just have to know how to uh, properly prep that hair before um, ventilating with it. My magnifier is on the way. Yes. That's another thing too. Excuse me. Hold on. Let me mute myself one more time. Sorry about that. Um, that's another thing too. With ventilating, it may not even be that you don't have the technique. It just could be that you can't see. So just make sure, I'm glad you said that uh, 504 darling, because it just could be uh, for the people who are having issues ventilating, it just might be that you can't see. And I say that that comes from years of teaching the technique um, hands on and seeing the difference between the people who can actually see what they're doing and the people who can't. So sometimes that's why I started bringing my own lighting equipment into the rooms because people literally could not see. And then when you can see what you're doing, when you put on a magnifier or a reader and then you have good lighting, it's better to understand what it is you're doing. All right. So just keep that in mind as well. I am still working on the double knots with the German needles. You might want to, if you haven't already, try the Asian needles too to see which one you like. Um, Jason, that's what I was thinking. And I was going to say that, but I didn't even want to introduce it. But yes, it is probably a double, double reverse split knot. Jason, you are correct. I do agree with you on that. Uh you are very, very welcome. Use the braiding. Oh, here we go. Use the braiding hair to practice so you're not wasting human hair. It's much more cost effective. Yes, 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 yes. 
Um, the most important not to master. Okay, okay. Until you're able to get a humidifier, place a bowl of cool water high up to help you. I will try whatever I need to try. And I should have mentioned that to, to my doctor today. Like, hey, I'm having this issue when I talk a lot. What do I do? I need to do something. Um, okay. She's properly saying if someone does not have edges. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You mentioned the request from vendors to not create a part hairline, no hair. Oh, Jermisha. Okay. So, darn, I have it right there. Okay. So, it's okay. So, when you order, let's say you have a relationship with a vendor, right? You Here's what you tell them. You say, hey, are you all able to leave a one inch section or however big you want, a one inch section of the a part a center part blank with no nothing done and then they're probably going to ask you what in the world you're talking about send them a picture of um, a part that you've used in there to remove the hair in that you're going to reventilate and then just tell them to not add a hairline at all tell them for for one inch across or half an inch or whatever from one side to the other, don't put a hairline and don't put anything in the part. You'll handle that. That's what I meant by that. I'm so glad you asked me that question to clarify. Uh, Beauty says, I love how you respond to us and our concerns. So, oh, you're so welcome. Hey, that's my favorite part. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> Raise and mute. Yes. <laughs> all right let's see uh let's see uh making sure i get yes this is another one that people use fray check to seal the knots be careful though with that fray check okay i don't know if you've had this issue but if you use too much fray check it can turn white so just be careful fray check does work just make sure you are careful with that all right Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, here we go. Can you convert a U part wig? Let me think. U part wig. Okay. Into a head or a headband wig into a look. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All you're gonna do if you have a headband wig, instead of that headband, you're just gonna add lace there and put a front on it. So you're gonna front a headband wig. Absolutely, you can do that. That's what I love about wig making is the possibilities are endless. And if you have a U-part wig, just take the area where the U-part is at. What I would do, let me think, how would I do this? So I would place the U-part wig on your head like you're going to wear it. But instead of having your leave out out, I would have my hair braided down. And then with the wig on, measure that U part area that would normally be out. You want to measure that area so you know how wide it is. And then when you take it off and you put it on your wig block, when you pin it down, then you know how big that lace needs to be. But I would place the lace down first and then sew that lace onto that material. Um, you can whip, you can do a whip stitch and then you can or if you could flip it over and do the galoon thing if you wanted to. You can get creative how you ever you want to do that. But I will whip stitch that down twice. So I will whip stitch it down the first time with it turned in its right side. And then I would flip it over and whip stitch a quarter of an inch to the outer perimeter of even that inside. So it would look like, I don't have my iPad tonight. So it would look like a U. It would look just like a U, all right? And so that's exactly how I would do that. All right, let's see. Please, pray. okay, there we go. Yes, yes, I revent my wigs all the time. I have one that's six years old. I just add hair as needed. Yes, see, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, see? See, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So let me just draw this out for you. 
Give me one second here to prep everything. I had not planned on drawing tonight because I was talking about wigs, but hey, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to draw what it, it's going to look like. Let me just go to notes. Okay, here we go. So if I were to... This is the lace. So the lace is already down. What I would do is I would stitch. What the heck? Why isn't this working? All right. Let's see. I have no clue why it, my iPad is deciding to not work today. So what I would do with this lace, you see how this lace is laid. So what I would do, going back to the lace, is I would stitch in a U section. So it would come all the way around just like a U, and then I would stitch to the outer perimeter. I do not know why it's not showing up. I just love technology. It is just amazing. There we go. Got it. Man. Okay, here we go. Boom. I would do that and stitch it down. Not like that with that V. It's trying to be cute. And then what I would do is come right to the outer perimeter and stitch it down just so it's reinforced. It wouldn't look like a V like that. It would look more like a U. But you see how those two areas are close together because one is going to reinforce the other. You don't want just one line of stitching going there. You want to make sure it's reinforced one on one side, one on the other side. Okay. So let me just go back over here to these comments. I think there we go. Uh, do you do this to units you already have? Absolutely. You can do whatever you want. If you, if it's pieces that you already have, um, there's a lot of people who have attended my training whether it's online or in person that do nothing but repairs, specialize, hey, specialize in just doing repairs. And so they'll take pieces that just like this, for instance, this piece that's been overplucked, they'll take that and refront it or just replace, uh, just reventilate those areas and make it look probably better than it did when they first got it. So yeah, you can do it to pieces that you already have. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? <laughs> My mama gave me her craft lamp. It helps a lot. I still don't have the knots down yet. You will get it. You will get it. I know you will. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of practice. Oh, yes. I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' name. I do receive that in Jesus' name. Whoo. Uh, let's see. Yes. Peppermint tea and smelling peppermint helps. Um, but sometimes it can be overwhelming because of the, the, uh, allergy issues that I have. So I get it. Fray check is a product that you can get on Amazon that some people have used for, it's actually been used for a very, very, very long time to, um, stop what it's used for is to stop fabric from fraying, but some people use it to seal the knots on their wig. All right. Come on, Kay, with the tips. I like to map the hairline with a white crayon or chalk. I like to use chalk too, because you can just wipe chalk off. That way I don't have to pluck. I just vent where my hair is. Boom. There you have it. I'm so glad. Oh, Angela, you're so sweet. I'm so glad to be a part of the community with you and my peers. You are so sweet. That is so, so sweet. Yes, you can. You can get Fray Check from Walmart. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, my customer requests two by four on her U part units. So there you have it. So you know, right there with the two by four, you know, already know how big that closure area is going to be. And what you can also do is you can sometimes take a closure that is already ventilated and sew it into the middle of a U-part wig, depending on how that U-part wig is made. 
I've done that before too. And glory be to God, it worked perfectly. All right. So you can also do that too, depending on what you have to work with. All right. I'm wrapping this up, guys. I'm almost done. Uh, let's see. Is your text color on black? Because if it's on white, that would be why it doesn't show up. Oh, you're talking about the iPad. No, it was a little button that uh, it was operator error. It was a little button that I forgot to push. <laughs> so that was all me. All right. I think I got everybody. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. I'll be right back here for the last show of the week tomorrow where I listen, 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 listen. You don't want to miss tomorrow's show. People ask me all the time, how in the world do Ricky and I get so much stuff done? And what has been one of the keys, I always say one of the keys to massive success in our business. And that has been, number one, is giving, dedicating the business to God. But number two, it's our yearly planning that we do every year in December. And so what we do, well, I'll, I'll spill that tea tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll be sharing with you how to set up your 2022 so that it is the most explosive, most, uh, the, 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 the financially explosive for you, but also on the business side of things as well. Um, I'm going to break down as much as I can in an hour, how to get that done so that you can have the best financial year in your business of 2022. And there's still plenty of time for you to take what I teach. Listen, tomorrow is gold, is pure gold. It's plenty of time for you to take that pure gold and for you to implement it into your business and even your personal life. So you do not want to miss that is going to be amazing. Make sure because tomorrow's live is not just for wig makers and beauty professionals. So make sure you share it and let people know, hey, you need to be here. This is going to be amazing. If you were uh, uh, on God Works on Monday, it's going to be like that, but on steroids. It's going to be really, really good. Very, um, um, a strategic approach to 2022 already. There's still a lot of month left in this year, but I'm going to show you how to maximize your 2022 tomorrow. Do not miss out. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and my sinuses tonight. I so appreciate you <laughs> more than you know. And I thank you all so much for just hanging out with me every night. Um, I hear Teddy. Here he goes, making his appearance again. Teddy, say goodbye to all the people. Say bye. <laughs> Y'all have an amazing night. I love you. And I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific.